people and welcome back to Wine Chat. My name is Emma and I'm a certified sommelier with a mission to spread wine knowledge and to help you drink better. Finally, 2020 is almost over and if that's not a reason to celebrate then well, I don't know what is. And to celebrate, most people tend to turn towards champagne. But if you are a little bit unorganized and haven't got your New Year's Eve beverage sorted just yet, then I have some alternatives for you. Now this is not your usual alternative to champagne list. I have thrown a few kind of left fielders in there, some things that I have really enjoyed drinking this year and things that I think you will enjoy too. You're not gonna find any Cava or Prosecco on this list. So grab a glass and let's have a chat about Emma's alternative to champagne for New Year's Eve. Let's chat about it. First up, we have English sparkling wine. Now this is a category that if even two years ago, I would have completely turned my nose up at it if you offered it to me and I would have laughed in your face. Thankfully, this past year and a half has been a time of growth and I have realized in this time how insanely good the English wine market is. As much as I hate to say it, but thanks to global warming, the conditions for making wine in England have never been better and on more than one occasion, I would have confused the great English wines with some of the incredible, fantastic wines of Burgundy or even Champagne. For the best English sparkling wine, look to the southern areas of Kent, Hampshire or Sussex. Much of the soil in southern England is actually a continuation of the chalky soil that you have in Champagne. So the terroir that we have here in southern England is perfect for making great sparkling wines. Most of the sparkling wine is made by the traditional method, so the same way as in Champagne. And a lot of producers use a majority of the same grapes as well. So Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. One thing that you will find at many of the great English sparkling estates is that a lot of the winemakers either come from Champagne or have been trained in Champagne. So they're going over there, they're training, and then they're bringing the knowledge back to the UK so that we can make sparkling wines almost as good as the French. So three of my favorite English sparkling producers whose wines are all made Mepe Traditionnel are Gasborne, who are based in Kent. Now these guys have an incredible range of both still and sparkling wine, but I especially love their Blanc de Blanc. It's 100% Chardonnay, and it has this fine minerality, a pure elegance, and a kind of toasty, creamy finish. Then we have Rathini, who are based in Kent, and their Blanc de Noir, which is a blend of Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, is a rich and decadent sparkling wine with fruity aromas of kind of red apples and red berries and the lingering minerality on the finish. It is delicious. And finally, we have Worcester Estate, who are based in Sussex as well, and their Brut Non Vintage is elegant and refined, and it's the perfect glass of bubbly to see in 2021. Now we're getting a little bit more kind of natty or hipster with this second option. And I bring to you Pet Nat. Now Pet Nat is short for Petion Naturel. And while it may seem like the new funky kid on the block, it is actually older than the traditional method of champagne. Pet Nats are made in a style called Method Ancestral in which the primary fermentation, now this is where the alcohol comes from, is stopped early, the wine is then transferred into the bottle and the fermentation is then allowed to finish. Now this means that there is no dosage, no liquor de triage, no secondary fermentation and no degorgement. So the wine will have a little bit of sediment still left in the bottle and the resulting wine will be a bit cloudy. The bottles will be sealed with a crown cap, so like what you see in the top of a beer bottle, rather than being closed with a cork like champagne. 
A pet mat will have slightly less effervescence than a wine mat in the traditional method, so it's gonna be really gentle on your palate. And they tend to have lower alcohols too. Most pet mats kind of come in at around eight to 11% ABV. And most pet mats are made by kind of natural and sustainable producers. So if this is something that floats your boat, then this is the sparkling wine for you. Now, one of my favorite pet nats is the Ancestral by Klaus Preisinger, and he is one of my top Austrian producers. Now, this is a pet nat made with the Saint Laurent grape, and it's really delicate with bright fruit, chalky minerals, and a kind of beautiful floral aroma on the finish. Closer to home in the UK, Tillingham in East Sussex has their Coal 19 pet nat. Now, Tillingham is one of the top natural producers here in England, and this wine comes from a blend of Pinot Noir, Auxois, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier, with a salty minerality, notes of bright lemon, green apple, and it has this creamy yet bright finish. In New Zealand, you can look for producers like the Supernatural Wine Co. or Cambridge Road, who make some fantastic pet nats. And in Australia, look for producers like Juma and Patrick Sullivan. Now I'm going completely left field with my last suggestion, but hey, Wine Chat is my baby and this is my YouTube channel, so I will suggest what I like to drink. So my third and final suggestion for an alternative New Year's Eve drop isn't even actually wine, it's cider. Now I'm not talking about the stuff that you buy for cheap in your off license or supermarket like Strong Grow, or even the stuff that my friends used to drink when we were 18 years old. I'm looking at you, Recordling. I'm talking about fine, proper, artisanal cider. Ciders that are made from 100% apple with a little bit of quince or pear thrown in here or there, minimal intervention and as much care is given to these ciders as you would give to a fine wine. Now these ciders are done in vintages as you would with wine and lots of them actually get aged in barrels or casks just like with a great wine. Unfortunately, in the UK, to call a beverage a cider, it actually only has to be made up of about 35% of apples. Now, this is definitely not the stuff that I'm suggesting. Now, this is a great option if you want something a little bit lower in alcohol, as they tend to kind of run from around 4 to 6% ABV. And I actually think that at all times, a great fine cider is appropriate for every occasion. It can be used as an aperitif, it's wonderful to pair with food, and even to finish off your meal or have as a nightcap. Now don't be mistaken and think that all cider is sweet. A lot of these fine ciders are actually really dry. They still have that kind of fruitiness and crisp finish that reminds you that this was made by apples. Now the cider that I'm drinking, I actually thought this would be really fruity and quite sweet, but even though the nose is really honeyed and kind of crisp apple, the palate is completely dry. Now, one producer that I absolutely love coming from Normandy in France is the incredible Eric Bordelais. Now, he used to be a sommelier, just like me, working at a three Michelin star restaurant in Paris. Now, he's friends with a whole lot of winemakers, including the great Didier Dagenot. And so he took everything he knew about winemaking and applied it to making his ciders. His ciders and peris are dry, complex, and absolutely world-class. All his apples are farmed without using any chemicals. He's actually certified organic, and all of his beverages, whether it's a cider or a peri, are pure expressions of the fruit that they come from. In the UK, I absolutely love Pilton, who are based in Somerset, and they are actually who I am drinking this evening, and I've almost finished the whole bottle filming this, so that can attest to how good their cider is. They make cider by the old English traditional method of keeving. Keeving is a process in which pectin gel will form on the top of freshly pressed apples. 
This traps the nitrogen and because the fermentation is starved of all its nutrients, the fermentation will finish a little bit earlier, leaving a slightly sweeter style of cider. The apples for their ciders are collected from the traditional cider orchards in and around the parish of Pilton and then slowly fermented for six months in their cool Victorian cellar before bottling. Tonight I am drinking their pom-pom cider. Now this is made from some bittersweet apples and just a touch of quince and it is super delicious. Like on the nose you have this kind of honeysuckled, kind of waxy pears, a little bit of quince obviously because there's some quince in this but what's really interesting is that on the palate you get that really kind of crisp apple flavor and it's completely dry but on the nose you would expect it to be so sweet and it's so complex and so interesting and yet it's only 4.8% ABV so this is the perfect kind of sparkling beverage to have on your New Year's Eve if you don't want to get too meshy too early on. Another producer in the UK who I really love his ciders is Oliver's Fine Cider. Now this is made by Tom Oliver in Hertfordshire and he makes a range of ciders including some pet nets which actually would be the perfect way to see in 2021. Well team, that is all for me for this year. I hope I've given you some inspiration if you're not yet sure what you're going to drink to see in 2021. Thank you so much for coming along on this wine chat journey with me. This year has been amazing making all these videos and sharing it all on Instagram and YouTube with you. Now stay tuned because it's only going to get bigger and better in 2021. So remember guys, drink better, be better, have a happy and safe New Year's, and I'll see you next year.